Well, uh, like uh, Nasser mentioned in the, in the, in the previous conversation, uh, AI and fintech are very related because uh, fintech is more about uh, uh, transactions all around the world, right? A volume of transactions. And, and, and every time, like uh, uh, for a KYC process, for a validate that a transaction is, is uh, good or not, uh, we need to know, we need to have more uh, algorithms uh, in order to learn the behavior of the of the financial uh, uh, behavior of, of the person, right? So in our case, we are planning to implement AI not just in our uh, platform for uh, money transfer, but also in our uh, reconciliation platform because we need to know we need to offer other or other services to the financial institutions. For example, for example, to get a loan in 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 the bank, you need to bring your old information. You need to bring your old statements and uh, financial information in order to get a loan. What if in the future, instead of bringing your statements, you you just need to send your your financial information information to them and all the banks can share the same information and it will be easy for them to give you a loan. So that is one of the examples that I think is, is, uh, is something that we can use even in our platform. Okay, I wish you to ask it to Armando. Uh, we've been discussing how, how fintechs have disrupted this finance, the, the market for financial service, yeah. but from the perspective of a very established company. How do you see these new, these new companies approach? Because you have the advantage of all the data from your customers, right? So I assume it's easier or faster to train your models because you have all this huge amount of data. So do you see, is it possible for a FinTech to compete with the traditional ones? Uh, that, that's a really good point. Um, so Capital One, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, and the, it's like a pretty big bank in the US. We have like half a trillion in outstandings. Um, and uh, in Canada, we have about 7 million customers, like Costco, uh, Hudson's Bay. Uh, and we specialize in, um, in people with a very risky portfolio. So we're like the only bank that, um, like if you were new to the country, you don't have a credit score, you were bankrupt. Um, we use, our, like instead of like spending money like in branches and stuff like that, we spend it on people to develop models to go deeper into the risk portfolio. There are companies like uh, Lending Club and like small um, micro lending uh, companies that started. And I highly doubt that when you, it doesn't matter, like all, all the buzzwords of like FinTech and like AI and like machine learning and all that stuff is pretty meaningless uh, when you don't have good data uh, that, and we don't have good people behind it. And we, when the people that are behind the computer cannot make sense of, uh, of all these buzz buzzwords and what they're saying. Um, all to say, it is, there is this, um, all like this inequality in, uh, in, the, in, in the world that is like the data is the new oil. Um, working as a data scientist and having access to um, 150 million uh, people, like the information of, of like people, where, this, where they spend, where they live, where they are, uh, their GPS location, and all those things, that information inequality is going. It's like it's going to make it harder and harder for people to to entry uh, to enter the, the industry because you cannot compete with uh, with someone uh, like when you have no data. You want to start your own company. You have no data. Like, what are you going to train your model on? Like, how how are you going to know how people are going to actually behave? Uh, you can drop whatever uh, technologies you, you want, but like it's it's uh, it's only getting harder and harder for for companies like this to. Uh, to enter, especially when it comes to uh, lending, right? And to, to be able to predict like, oh, is this guy gonna pay me back or not? Um, whether we talk about different financial services, that's a completely different story. Um, playing in spaces such as like uh, automated stock market, um, like, like whatever World Simple is doing, right? So you instead of like buying stocks yourself or whatever, you, you just give them uh, your money and they, they they deal with it and they use artificial intelligence for that. That is like a blank space, right? Like how do you, so I guess like my, my, my challenge to like new entrepreneurs trying to explore this space is like not trying to reinvent the wheel and not trying to go against giants uh, that is very, very hard to compete against. And you're just like gonna like, like roll over and over and, uh, and you're just gonna face wall and another wall. Um, but rather try to like explore like wide canvases, like the way, uh, like well simple is doing a lot, or like PayPal did it at its time, right? Like trying to find uh, things regarding 
related to payments and investments and things like that that, uh, that haven't been fully exploited by banks. Victor, do you want to add anything? To uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, related to the, the question, uh, well, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, in the past, I think uh, banks they are uh, changing through the through the through the decade. Uh, I remember the first time that I saw an ATM, and uh, and a lot of people didn't uh, trust that uh, you can go a machine and, and and get your 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 cash right. And people really like to talk with a person, and that person give you the, the your money. So uh, and and it takes some time to people to get used to use that kind of technology and 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 the next stage was when you start like uh, accessing to your uh, bank account online using only a user and password people were scared about how is going what was going to happen with your information because you're going to access to your to your, uh, your money and and someone can stole from them i think this is the same thing for fintech now we are uh, i think we're not uh, playing against them we're not playing against banks we're most uh, like a, 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 a technology arm from them they they are moving so slow because like uh, Nasser says, there has a lot of cost uh, involved in the process, right? They have to, they have to, uh, um, you know, they have a very high infrastructure. They have to uh, accomplish a lot of regulations. And because of that, it's sometimes it's really difficult for, for these uh, big companies to move to the new technologies. And that's why companies, fintechs, uh, uh, including AI, blockchain, uh, we, can, we can test that uh, technology first. We can, we, can, we can check it if it works or not, and if it's good. And then, if we have a very good product to offer to the, to the final users, then we can work together. Like, like, uh, like in, in the last presentation, uh, even if I have a fintech, even if I work on blockchain, even if I am planning to uh, include AI in my platform, I need the financial network to download the money. It's, it's impossible. I can buy bitcoins. But what, I, what I'm going to do with the Bitcoins? I, I need to do something. I, I need to find uh, companies who are willing to accept Bitcoins to buy something. So I think this is, this is the same. Uh, we are in the, in the fintech area. We have a lot of opportunities to try new ways uh, to give a, a new user experience for, for the customers. And, and, and eventually, all these fintechs are going to be uh, probably in the partnership with the big uh, corporation or they're going to they're gonna buy it. I want to come back to one point that Armando mentioned was about like spe specific about loans. So you have all this data and you have all this information in your models. How do you deal with bias in your models? Because it's, you have, so, 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 have lots of regulations, especially in US and Canada uh, against discrimination. So how do you monitor to avoid bias in your models? Yeah, so with the Canadian regulation, they don't allow you to, for example, to segment on discrimination specific things like uh, like like a zip code um, so like you cannot say like oh people that live in this in this region are 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 like riskier than other people even if your model says that like hey like ah, people in this area like can be pretty sketchy like there's a high correlation you cannot use that as an input to your model you can also not use um, age um, in, uh, in in your models either or like gender and things like that what you can, but you can do play around with that. So, for example, like you're not able to use someone's age, but you can use how old their their um, their credit is. So, when was the first time that they got their credit, right? So, it's like it's um, if I, for example, I'm 25 years old, uh, so they cannot know that they, they cannot use the fact that I'm a 25 years old, but they can use the fact that I've had a credit card for eight years. So that they they correlate with each other. Uh, but they don't like necessarily, they're not indicative of uh, one versus the other. And the, the latter is a lot more indicative of, of what you actually do with credit um, because you can be like 45 years old and like new to the country and you were like using cash every day in your, in your home country and uh, that means nothing, right? Versus like a 21 year old that is like right out of school and very responsible guy, like you know what I mean? Like that, you can't really compare that. Uh, a funny, a funny um, thing, for example, was that uh, there's like high correlations on, uh, for example, like what what domain you use to apply when you apply online, um, to to the point um, of um, technology changing and everything. Um, we need to change our models a lot 
and adapt to technology. Because, for example, before people were used to like when you, when you apply for a card, you would just go to the bank and be like, oh, like I want to, uh, I would just want a credit card, right? Uh, but and then after that, it shifted to like, oh, people applying online and their computers, and now it's shifting to people applying on their phones. So all these risk profiles are changing over time, and uh, and you get different correlation variables that, that are indicative of how risky a person is. So for example, like something we're looking at uh, is that there's high correlation with uh, the email that someone applies with. Uh, someone that applies with a with a with a Hotmail account is a lot riskier than someone who who applies with a like a Gmail account. Uh, whether we we use that in our models, that's like that's a different question. Uh, but whether those correlations exist, that that is definitely true. And that has nothing to do with Hotmail itself or like Gmail itself, but it's just like the self-selection of people and uh, how they use different technologies and their inherent risk profile that attaches to that. Victor, do you want to add anything? Oh, sorry. Uh, just to make this a debate. Do you want to make any point <laughs> or we just move on? Uh, talking about the... Uh, about what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I agree. Maybe. I agree. I totally agree with the, the comment. Okay, so when you see you you mentioned all the power of the big corporations and said the comp this this the new fintech shouldn't fight. Is there any room for partnerships? And what would be this space? What f paths would be easier for fintechs to get business to start making business with the big corporations? Is there a, is there a yeah. route there? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So uh, there's actually like banks are not, uh, even though they're very old corporations and they're very established and then they've been here since the beginning of time, uh, like money is something that is not going to disappear anytime soon. Money has like existed for a long time. And people that usually deal with money uh, are not dumb people, uh, are like trusted people. So banks, I'll just say banks have very, very smart people. Um, I'm proud to say like I'm the dumbest person in the room when I'm like working with, with my colleagues. And there's definitely been a shift of, uh, of like banking being like the old industry. Like someone, I was just talking to someone in, uh, uh, like earlier and they were like, oh sorry, like I, like I never thought you would be a banker cause like two years, 25 years old. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, um, like my directors are 31 years old uh, and they're like the, the oldest people there. Um, it, there's definitely been a shift towards having more like agile, like the, the talent pool that we're looking for uh, and like the banks are actually like going for is, ver is very different and even the internal structure is like going a lot more agile. So before there would be like lots of, um, of chains like, oh, you like, before you do this, you need like uh, access, I mean, um, approval from, from your direct manager, your senior associate and then your, your direct manager and then the manager of the manager and, 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 and so on and so forth. Right now, we've adopted this, um, this new structure, um, like Agile, that is basically having in internally to the company, there are like sub-companies. Each company has like, say like f uh, four to six people. They're called pods. And it's like a startup within the company. So for example, like my, my team's called Mint. Uh, that is uh, like we come up with like our own logo and like our own like t-shirts and stuff like that. and. Um, and it's like, in, in, and it depends on what you're working on. So there are like, like pods that are working in fraud. There, there are pods that are working in marketing, in payments, in uh, anti-money laundering, and there are different different things like that. So it's almost like insourcing that startup capabil capabilities. Um, and for example, we also have like a software studio. Uh, so all the things that we're like having to, to deal with vendors before. Right now, we've hired people from like uh, like high executives from like Google, Facebook, and like brought them in to build those teams from within. Uh, and we are like leveraging those tools and making use of those same technologies that the big companies are using, partnering with them and collaborating with uh, the Googles and the Facebooks of the world inst instead of trying to compete with them. Yeah, well, uh, from the FinTech perspective, I think there's we have too many chances to do a, a deal with the big institutions in different ways. You know, we can, uh, because we have different markets. 
we have money transfer, we have payments, we have AI, we have a reconciliation, we have like a, a KYC process on online. So I think uh, uh, the 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 difference that we have uh, with with financial institutions is that we we because we don't have this high cost. We can experiment. We can do some testing in different technologies. And if it doesn't work, we move to the next one. And then let's see what happens. But if we, if we can find the right way to do a thing, uh, I don't know, to, to fix a problem in a better way, I think that's the, the moment where the big institution is going to start looking at us. What's, yeah. the, what's the role of AI when you think about, the, about trying, experimenting new things and new opportunities? Is there anything else you are, to, for example, I know you have a very strong background with conciliation. Yeah. Right. So is AI applicable for that? And are you trying something like this in your business? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Like I said, uh, uh, for example, for now, uh, if you want to get a loan as a SMB or medium uh, company, you have to bring a lot of information to the to the bank. You need to bring your statements, your financial information, and talk with the with the guy trying to on, uh, explain him why you need money for your company. And based on that, you can get access to a loan or not. But it takes, I don't know, two, three days to access to that. And when you're running a business, you're, you sometimes you don't have two, three one, days, one week for that. But imagine that if we can share all this information between banks, uh, uh, you can uh, all these uh, financial institutions, fintechs, or big banks can access all this data online, and then based on that information, they can offer you a better deal, a better line of credit to grow your business. You don't have to go to the to, to the to the bank to ask for a, for a loan. So I think yeah, AI is very important because we need to understand the business behavior. We need to we need we need to get all these uh, people who are not uh, uh, in in the bank uh, industry now. All these unbanking uh, person here in Canada, for example, it's I think 90% people has a bank account, but it doesn't happen in in for example in Latin America, in Mexico. There's a lot of in Mexico we have around 40% of the population with a bank account. So we have 60% like a potential clients waiting for an opportunity to put the money in, 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 in a bank. But they need to have a, a different kind of services because they are not willing to go to a financial institution uh, they, because, uh, I don't know, they don't want to pay taxes or something like that. So uh, we, I think there's uh, a lot of opportunities to find, to use AI in order to get this new kind of clients. And sometimes uh, big banks, they don't have the, 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 the infrastructure for that, right? So they, they need to like build a, um, a place to, to, to receive customers. But if you, uh, I don't know, develop a platform uh, for an app or a web-based solution, you don't need to go physically to anywhere. You only need to upload your information and wait for your response in two or three minutes, and voila, you have your, your, your credit. So far, we have, we've been talking about the, the role of AI from the perspective of the business. I want you to shift from the perspective of the customer. I don't know numbers up in Canada uh, or Mexico. I know about Brazil, for example, where 60% of the population has bank accounts, and from the 60, maybe 85% keep their savings in a very, very conservative kind of savings account that pays very, very low interest because people don't know how to invest. They are afraid of going to stock market. They are afraid of doing anything different. What's the role of AI and these new technologies in order to offer easier ways to invest money? Do you think banks and fintechs can do something to help people to invest better? Yeah, so I'm going to do like, even though I don't work for what, well, simple at all, I'm going to do like a little bit of marketing for them. Uh, so that's exactly one of the things that they do, right? So Wealth Simple tries to address that issue exactly. So it's like if you have $10,000 in your account, um, instead of, of uh, just living on a savings account that is going to do, be uh, giving you back like 1.8% if you're lucky, 2% if you're like, like the luckiest, uh, you could be making a lot more money from that by putting it in uh, in like government bonds, um, in like the stock market, 
But the problem is that people don't have the expert the expertise to like know like oh like like where do I start like who's gonna like which company bond like is, can I just buy it from the, from Canada can I buy it from the U S like can I just like how do I do that right and uh, the beauty of of tools like this one and there are like many more companies um, coming out of the blue with that as well is that you just give them your money and then you choose your risk profile you say like honestly like I'm gonna do like from one to 10, I wanna choose level of, of uh, risk 10. I know that if I, if I do risk 10, I can win a lot more money, but with a, with a lot more risk, uh, there's, a lot of, there's more volatility as well, so, that I, so I can also lose more money. Uh, or you can choose like risk number one, which means like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably never gonna lose money, but I'm gonna make very, very small amount of money, which is like almost the same as, as a bank account. So this is one of the ways that we uh, that like companies are using uh, AI for from a customer perspective. Another tool that we are using that it, not in the investment side, but we have uh, we're using for um, like from a customer side is called Second Look. So what it does is uh, it looks at your transactions and then it sent, for example the, it sends you a not, not notification when you have a when it detects a transaction and knows that it's a subscription, for example. When we, fun fact, when we first launched it in the, in the US, so we're like Amazon Web Services' largest client because we have all of our infrastructure on the cloud. Uh, and when, when we first launched this, we were sending uh, notifications to people saying like, hey, like Amazon just charged you your Amazon Prime, uh, like uh, your, your membership again. And they're like, are you, are you cool with this? Uh, and then like people, if not, you can like call Amazon at this number. And uh, we like overflowed their customer, their customer service. Uh, and they were just like calling Amazon to like cancel their, their, their accounts. Uh, I mean, their, their memberships with, with Amazon. So, I mean, Amazon was pretty pissed uh, at us. So they were just like, yo guys, I thought we were partners. Uh, but it's like, it's, it was one of the use cases of using um, AI um, and machine learning detections to identify things as subscriptions. Have, we also have it on double charge. So if, if you get charged twice at a restaurant, if you leave like too high of a tip, you would also get a notification. You know, like, and sometimes you, you write down your tip with, with your pen uh, and some people can do like, oh, if you leave like $10, some, someone can add like a zero and like make it, make it 100. Uh, they, like it also detects that type of situations. Uh, another one is like, like bill hike. So if uh, from one month to another, you get like a, a percentage increase. So it was like, hey, like Rogers is charging you too much this month. Uh, like if you want to call them, like use this. So yeah, again, like that's one of the tools that we've uh, been like putting out there to the service of the customer. Victor? Anything to help your students to use the money that their parents are sending from Mexico to Canada so they <laughs> use, more wi use it wisely? <laughs> yes, well, uh, um, I think that we have a lot of uh, user cases uh, for AI from the uh, customer perspective. Uh, you know, uh, I was uh, starting a, a kind of a, a demo project with, uh, with even with, with, with Nassar uh, about how to, how to uh, uh, monetize all the information, your personal data that you, that you have. Uh, today you have, a, uh, I don't know, I think all of us, we have a, an account on, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, whatever. And, and you know that all these companies use our data for other purpose, and they are, they are, they are uh, getting money from that information because they're selling that information to the, I don't know, to the, the big uh, retails, uh, uh, hotels, etc. So imagine that if we can have a you know, platform where we can put information, personal information, and I can decide who's gonna use that information and also, I'm gonna receive a money for that, because I'm, I'm um, I am uh, giving them the, my permission to use it for a uh, marketing purpose. So this is something that we can use, and this it's, it will be like a, a a big data for AI. So in in in, a, in the future, it's gonna be like that. So you're gonna be able to decide who's gonna use your information. If uh, Facebook has access only for your username and password or your photos or your personal info or your financial info. So uh, we can build things like that for, for sure. And, and also, uh, um, I don't know, today it's, it's very complicated 
to, to know exactly how many students, international students, are moving from one side to another to study a uh, three months English course or, or a master's degree, especially from the uh, from the Latin America. So we, we, AI can help us with that. AI could help us to know exactly how much money we're using living in these countries like Canada, like US, like UK. And then based on that ex uh, uh, information, I don't know, financial institutions can, of can offer uh, uh, a loan for the parents to send their uh, their children outside of the of the of the country. So.